body movement how does it go about and does effective writing skills also help the ma'am had shared that with us that you have to have the listening ability then reading abilities writing abilities and do we actually once we listen to such speakers do we actually take to improve ourselves or simply it it's a eye wash these are the final points which um, ma'am pinky uh, shama uh, johnny would be explaining to us because in north, north we generally have sharma so it automatically comes instead of shama sharma <laughs> so that creates certain and uh, that was type it was type sharma only initially i said it's no it's shama <laughs> so uh, that simplicity also shows that one alphabet also can change the entire gamut without taking much time personality yeah yes personality and <clears throat> yes um i will ask ma'am to take it over okay sir ma'am just check the, the network uh, uh, bandwidth again ma'am network bandwidth okay sir the issue i will just check it sir i'm sitting close to the router i don't know what the issue is can you hear me sir yes ma'am yes can i share my screen or uh, can i have the ppt uh, as, as it is convenient to you uh, if you want i will allow you, uh, allow you the screen sharing just a minute okay sir or i can ask my associate the way you want i'll try sharing my screen sir okay if i'm uh, to do okay I'm okay good. anything is fine yeah that's fine yeah <clears throat> okay so good evening participants i welcome you all again uh, to another webinar titled enhancing oral skills well uh, i'll introduce myself again my name is pinky sharma johnny we already had a session yesterday on enhancing writing uh, uh, writing skills that is uh, enhancing the art of written communication and today we'll be talking about oral skills and since uh, some of you had asked for uh, books that can help in uh, honing your writing skills i wanted to uh, choose three books at different levels the first one for basic learners or be uh, beginners will be easy writing skills step by step by ann longknife and kd sullivan i have given the books uh, and the author's name on the chat if you can find that it's there for your reference and you have improve your writing skills by roy johnson and then oxford that's at the intermediate level you have oxford guide to effective writing and speaking uh, with a subtitle how to communicate clearly by john seely this is for people at an advanced level who would like to hone their skills more uh, with that i'll begin today's session and before we begin i'd like to quote um an athenian philosopher i'm sorry i am unable to close this chat okay right i would like to quote an athenian philosopher plato i'm sure you must have all heard of him he says i quote a wise man speaks because he has something to say a fool speaks because he has to say something i hope you get the difference and by the end of this presentation i will leave it to you to decide if i sounded like a fool or the other side or the other way on the other hand cato the elder a roman historian had said grasp the subject and the words will follow you need to have in depth knowledge about the subject to be able to speak clearly so once you know what you're going to talk about then it comes naturally so let's begin the first slide well things to know what do you know about speaking we all think that just using a language in the oral mode is speaking but then using it effectively also matters a lot speaking we use to converse or express thoughts through the spoken language we try to vocalize our thoughts that's what speaking is all about but sometimes remember silence speaks volumes well but however today we are discussing effective speech uh, mechanisms so let's not talk about silence so it may be informal or formal kinds of speech 
just like we have two forms in uh, written communication, we also have two forms in oral communication. One is the formal and the other the informal, and you know when to use what. You will not be talking in the same way to your uh, higher ups or uh, to your professional colleagues in the same way you talk to uh, the people at home. Well, understanding that is important. Now, talking about speaking skills, how can speaking skills help you? What, what does it do to you? Well, it's, it helps you in uh, increasing the ability to communicate effectively. It allows the speaker to express and convince the listener into doing something. When you expect an action from the other person, then you use a convincing and a, uh, an expressive tone. It also ensures not to be misunderstood. Once you develop your uh, speaking skills, you will ensure that you do not use ambiguous words or misleading sentences that can uh, hamper the, uh, the continuity of thought or can cause an obstacle in conveying your message. Well, I'd like to quote Ralph uh, Waldo Emerson here. Speech is power. Speech is to persuade, to convert, to compel. These are powerful words from Ralph Waldo Emerson. And if we believe in it, we will definitely be good speakers. Can I have the next slide, please? Yes. There is a need to master speaking skills because wherever you go, English has become a, univer a universal language, not inherent. Language is not inherent, it is acquired. Now to explain this, I'll tell you something. If you if I have my son growing up in a French family, he will easily pick up the language, isn't it? Because he's exposed to the language and it's a productive skill. So he will obviously have knowledge of French as well. So um, I'm calling it a more complicated skill when compared to the other skills because our confidence is ruled by our inhibitions. So once we allow our inhibitions to take over our confidence, then nothing is going to be productive. Well, our confidence and our inhibitions are inversely proportional. If your confidence level is high, you're trying to suppress and control your inhibitions. But if you allow your inhibitions to take over your confidence, then we fail to succeed. And this is very important in speaking skills because unlike other skills, speaking skills are, can sometimes be frustrating and terrifying for most people. And I should admit that before every session, I am terrified because I don't know how I will come up. I don't know how I will deliver my speech. I don't know how I will be received. So I can't bring my people. I keep telling that I'm nervous and I'm nervous, but my people know me. So now they have given up on me. So they just don't bother about my uh, chatter. So it also involves, uh, it, it involves more than just pronouncing words. So when we talk about speaking skills, it's not just phonetics or the pronunciation. It's not enough if you just work on your pronunciation. Well, I'm saying pronunciation and not pronunciation. Many people get that wrong. There's no O in pronunciation. Uh, okay, so as a noun, it is pronunciation. So it is important to pronounce words, but you should also understand that we have several accents and dialects. Uh, even in Hindi, we have uh, different dialects like uh, uh, the Khari Boli or um, the Chhattisgarhi and uh, the Braj Bhasha. And these are all dialects, different dialects in Hindi. Similarly, we also have different dialects in English. We have the British English, the, uh, uh, the accent is different. Um, we have American English, Indian English, Canadian English, African English. They're all not the same, okay? Because the way they pronounce words are pretty different, right? And uh, sometimes even the spellings are different. So we need to understand the context in which we are using the language, but we are exposed to British English because uh, thanks to the colonizers who brought the language with them. But yes, we follow British English in India. So, and uh, it is one of the official languages of the nation as well. So we obviously have to learn the language. I'm not here to 
argue whether English is superior or any other regional language is superior, but I'm here to tell you uh, that English is important because it has gained universal significance and it is important for us to know more about it or to hone our language skills in English. So, and for this, you need a good vocabulary as well. Good vocabulary matters. By good vocabulary, I'm saying a choice of various words, word combinations. For this, you need to work a, a little harder. It is not enough if you read alone, because sometimes we read and conveniently forget about it. We have to take a step forward and expose ourselves to the language through the, or, uh, through the oral medium. By this, I'm saying you should listen to good speeches. You have amazing speeches. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Madhavan's speech in the year 2017, uh, which he gave at Harvard University. So it's really inspiring to see our Indians perform so well, even in a native speaking country. So you should see that. And uh, when you see that, obviously your vocabulary, uh, not just your vocabulary, but also the way it is pronounced exactly, you get to know about it. So, and you also need to have a sound knowledge of the grammar of the language that you want to speak in, because grammar is a whole system and structure of a language. It includes syntax, morphology, semantics, phonology, you name it, and everything is encompassed in grammar. So it is a must to learn grammar, to master the language, and to speak without any inhibitions. Can I have the next slide, please? Well, talking about the kinds of speaking situations, there are three kinds of speaking situations. One is an interactive, the other is a partially interactive, and the third one is a non-interactive situation. In an interactive situation, like a casual conversation or a group discussion or in dialogues, interviews, you have two or more people conversing with each other, interacting with each other, sharing their views and thoughts. But in a partially interactive situation, uh, like the one we have now, where I'm presenting to an audience, but the audience are not able to interact with me isn't it? So it's an oral presentation where one person is interacting while the majority of the audience cannot interact at the moment. So this is a partial interactive situation. And then you have the non-interactive situation, which is more like a recorded speech. When you listen to uh, videos on YouTube, radio broadcasts or flip classroom videos, these call for non-interactive uh, uh, sessions or non-interactive uh, situations where you just get to hear the speaker, but you don't get to interact uh, with them at the time of the speech. Next slide, please. Right. You need to be prepared before beginning to speak. By this, I mean, before you speak, you have to be an active listener. When you want to respond to someone, only if you have received the message from the person, can you reply in the most appropriate manner. So be an active listener. So who is an active listener? An active listener is someone who can focus for more than 20 minutes because active listening happens only for the first 20 minutes of any session. I completely understand that. And if someone is successful in holding the attention of the audience for more than 20 minutes, then it is a huge success for the speaker. So an active listener does not get distracted easily, is not preoccupied with any other thoughts in the mind. When you keep your mind clear and when you're an active listener, you will definitely be a good speaker as well. Be a quick organizer of thoughts. When something, when a situation arises, when you have to speak about something, be a quick organizer. Think about the details related to it. If a topic is given to you, think about what you can say, who are involved, who will benefit, what will be the outcome. Think of these things. Draw an outline in your mind and structure your speech in your mind before you actually deliver it. Keep in mind the basics of speech. Every speech has an opening, a body, and conclusion, just like we have in writing. 
So uh, the opening should be very remarkable. Only then you'll be able to draw the attention of your audience. The body should be interesting enough to keep your uh, audience in rapt attention, to continue to keep them in rapt attention. The conclusion should be commendable. It should end with a boom where you know people take something with them because it, the, uh, the end part of it matters a lot because that lingers in the minds of the listeners more than what uh, you said in the body or the opening part. So you need to be very careful. And moreover, people always await the end of sessions, isn't it? They're desperate to finish, wind off and go. So obviously they'll be active at that time. So ensure that you, uh, ensure that you uh, finish with a commendable conclusion. Next slide, please. Right. So what contributes to effective speech? There are certain factors that contribute to effective speech. First is preparation and practice. You need to be prepared. You cannot just blurt out something without preparation. You need to practice. I do it all the time before my sessions. I have a trial session with an imaginary audience. I stand in front of the mirror just to check my body language, if my expressions are fine, and I talk to the mirror. Okay, people think I'm crazy, fine, it's fine, but then it helps me a lot and I think it will help you also. So have an imaginary audience or do a, uh, or uh, have a video uh, record of your own speech and see where you can change yourself or see where uh, you can perform better and know your audience. It is important to know who your audience will be, right? Your audience can be youngsters, can be adults, they can be uh, a mixed group or people from various backgrounds. So when you speak, because speech has a lot of power and it can end up being controversial. So you have to be very careful before you prepare your speech. You have to do some research on who your audience will be. That is very useful. And uh, remember the KISS principle we spoke about yesterday in the written uh, communication session? Yes, it's, it is also applicable in the spoken, uh, in, uh, in the spoken uh, skills uh, because you have to remember to keep it short and simple. When you use long winding sentences in a very monotonous tone, not only will the listeners lose track of the thought or um, get confused with ideas, it will also speak very derogatorily about yourself, about the speaker, okay? So try to keep it short and simple. We are all racing against time. So nobody has the time for others or others blabbers, okay? So remember to keep it short and simple. So interact with your audience. Of course, in a virtual setup like this, it's impossible to interact with the audience, but yes, thanks to the chat session that we have here, because uh, they can ask questions and uh, I can respond to it through that. But a face-to-face -face interaction is not possible in the virtual setup, but if you get a chance to meet the audience and uh, talk to them, please be interactive with your audience to ensure that they're active and not sleeping away. So speak with sincerity and passion. Speak from your heart. When you have that, nothing can stop you. Just like um, Cato the Elder said, you know, uh, grasp the subject and words will follow. So when you have a strong hold on the subject, when you associate yourself with the subject, then everything else will follow. So uh, that's what I have to say about speak with sincerity and passion. So what contributes to effective uh, uh, speech? These are the elements. Can we move on to the next slide, please? Yeah, some of the other factors are fluency. Fluency is um, a primary thing in spoken language because if you're not fluent, if you have too many pauses and breaks, and if you're groping for words, then you're not fluent enough. So when there is coherence in what you're saying, when there, has, uh, when there is unity and cohesion in what you're saying, there is fluency. There has to be a free flow of thoughts. Okay, so that's about fluency and you can develop it 
by um, recording your videos, you can play games, and uh, you can get feedback from people, and that's how you improve your uh, fluency. So talk to the entire group and maintain eye contact. This is important when you are addressing a large audience in uh, an actual setup, unlike the virtual setup. So when you talk to people, ensure that you maintain eye contact with everyone around the hall. Uh, have uh, maintained a panoramic view throughout so that people don't feel uncomfortable uh, because you, you should not make uh, people think that you're staring at one person and ignoring the others. So ensure that you have a panoramic view of your audience just to make them feel that you, uh, you're you acknowledging their presence and you, uh, want to, you want to reiterate the fact that they are also important. So that way they will be good listeners and you will also be, uh, you will also make a mark for yourself. So reach out and encourage feedback. What do I mean by reach out and encourage feedback? Sometimes people do not appreciate feedback, especially when it is negative feedback. They feel offended and they, uh, so they try to avoid the feedback session itself, but it is good to reach out and get the feedback to hone our skills so that we can develop our speaking skills, we can identify where we are going wrong, where we are weak and strengthen that aspect. So do not talk too much. Well, when you talk too much, people get bored. Like I told you, we're racing against time and people don't have time for others. So do not talk too much. If you're given a stipulated time, let's say 45 minutes session, stick to the stipulated time. If you uh, prolong it to an hour and a half, people are going to get bored. So what will they do? They will immediately switch off their minds and physically be present, but mentally be preoccupied with something else. So remember to keep it short and simple and don't take too much time when you try to speak. This uh, you should uh, use with simple sentences instead of using compound complex sentences like we discussed in yesterday's sessions. So try to avoid uh, complex sentences or compound complex sentences in your spoken language. So talk to the entire, uh, yeah, where were we? End your speech in a memorable way. I already spoke to you about it um, because the end really matters because that is what the audience will take home at the end of the day. Next, please. Well, well talking about speaking, it's not an easy task. I can give you various tips and I can go on and on about speaking, but we have to remember that in communication, we have barriers and in uh, so in the oral medium, we have a lot of barriers. Now, by barriers, I'm saying <clears throat> the physical and the mental barriers that we have. In technical terms, we call it noise in communication. You have a sender and a receiver. The sender is the speaker or someone who is uh, using a written uh, medium to convey a message. And the receiver is someone on the other hand from whom you expect an action to be done or uh, you expect a response from them. So it is important to understand that sometimes you have barriers when you communicate. And one main thing is ambiguous or unclear messages. And this can occur because of structure, meaning or modifiers. Remember when we discussed uh, dangling modifiers and misplaced modifiers, when you move the word, you know, when you rearrange a word in a particular sentence, the entire meaning changes, it sounds meaningless, okay, or sometimes it misleads, it's confusing. So bear, this is one big barrier in speaking, um, because sometimes people misplace words, which even I do at times, I have to admit, right, but it, it is not completely unworkable or uh, unavoidable, you can definitely work on it. So lack of consistency. When we talk about consistency, I'm talking about logic and accuracy. L sometimes we lose logic and accuracy when we talk. 
we are concentrating more on the content, the pronunciation, the grammar, and so we forget about the logic and accuracy. That shouldn't be the case. You have to have sound knowledge of what you're talking about. And when you have sound knowledge, you definitely will not lose consistency. But <clears throat> incomplete sentences. Many of we, us use incomplete sentences, even when uh, uh, talking uh, in a formal environment, but that should be avoided. Sentences like, um, uh, I think I can, and uh, you know what I mean. These are all incomplete sentences, right? So these incomplete sentences should be avoided, especially in a formal setup. You have to complete the sentence. It, when you're talking with your friends, it's fine. When you're talking with your family members, it's fine. But when you're talking in a situation where your speech can be judged, where your personality can be judged, try and avoid such uh, incomplete consistencies because it stands as a barrier for effective communication. So the other main barrier is not understanding the receiver. Sometimes we take for granted that the receiver will understand whatever we have to say in the way we intend to say. But due to several factors, sometimes uh, the, the message can be misinterpreted. And we do not think in the shoes of the receiver or the person who is listening to us. So it is important to think in terms of the receiver person be able to understand what I'm saying. If I'm going to talk to an uneducated person in high sound, uh, high sounding language, it's not going to work in any way, right? It'll be just like looking at a dumb charade program or, um, you know, uh, watching the television uh, with the mute on. So please understand that you have to give prime importance to the receiver in this case, it is a listener, because when you speak, you have listeners for, uh, of your speech, right? So words have different meanings and can be interpreted differently. We're talking about homonyms. Homonyms have the same spelling, the same pronunciation, but different meanings, right? So you need to be very careful with such words when you speak. Let's say, let's take the word bark, B-A-R-K. When I say bark, what comes to your mind? A dog barking probably, but couldn't it mean a tree bark? It has several meanings, right? So, but here what you can, I know it's tricky, but you, what you can do is take, look for contextual clues in the sentence. Or when you speak, if you look for contextual sentence, you will be able to understand what the speaker is saying use of negative words. Try not to use negative words like I cannot do, I don't like that. Instead, you can say, I can do it a little later. I like that better than this one. It sounds more nice. You have a positive feeling about yourself and you're not uh, getting the disapproval of the listener as well. You're not earning the wrath of anyone when you uh, avoid using negative words. It is difficult to avoid negative words. It's going to take a lot of time, but it's not impossible, okay? Next, please. Right. Tips to improve speaking skills. Now we come to a very interesting part because all people want from these sessions are tips, tips. They don't want to know how they have to go about it, but they just want the tips, but it's okay. If that is what you're here for, this is what you get from me. So pronounce words clearly. You need to pronounce words clearly. I told you about the dialect and the accent of Indian English. In Indian English, we speak differently because of our mother tongue influence. Well, it's not a bad thing because English is just a foreign language. You don't have to be ashamed of yourself for using a different accent or a dialect, okay? It is completely acceptable. You don't have to fake an accent, but knowing how to pronounce words the right way matters, right? It can do a great deal in improving your speaking skills. Simple things in phonetics can bring a great change in the way you speak. For example, uh, words starting with W. I always tell my students, kiss your W's and bite your V's. Right? When I say kiss your W's, how can you kiss your W's? When you kiss, you try to 
pout your mouth, isn't it? You round your lips. So try to round your lips when you're uttering words beginning with W and try to bite your lower lip with your upper teeth when you're pronouncing words that begin with a V, right? For example, how do we say water? Do we say water? You say water with. With is a very easy example I can give you. Uh, I'm coming with him. It's not with because you're biting your upper uh, lower lip with your upper teeth, then it is not pronounced as a W. So if you want to have the right pronunciation, you should say with water window. That's that sounds better, isn't it? Now, talking about double consonants, sometimes we tend to stress on words that have two consonants together, like the words little. Yeah, we say little, better, butter, mutton, and all those things. But then try and uh, not stress those words, you know, as if your tongue is slightly touching the roof of the mouth. Butter, that's it. Little, that's it. Okay, so it makes a lot of difference, isn't it? And you don't have to curl your R's and uh, round your, uh, curl your L's like uh, the native speakers. No, we have our own way of talking, but as long as it's not like early morning, it has to be checked for, okay? It's not early, it's early, right? We, we Indians tend to use a year, especially South Indians, we tend to use a year sound in, uh, before the uh, before words beginning with E, yearning, yearly yearning, okay? So <clears throat> no, it's earning, right? So try to incorporate, I'm not criticizing anyone for uh, being incompetent in uh, uh, speaking clearly. It's, it, it's the passion that people have sometimes for the language that makes them speak the right way, right? So pronounce words clearly. That makes a lot of a difference uh, with speaking skills. Use the correct forms of words. See, sometimes changes in tense can be a big problem when you communicate. Well, by change in tense, being a speaking examiner, I have seen students committing <clears throat> very grave mistakes, like he will die yesterday. He will died yesterday. How can a person uh, will died, will and died, is it the correct form of tense? Will is always related to the future tense, something that is going to happen, right? And died is a past form. How can will and died come together? So you need to work on such discrepancies in tense. Right. I know that there are 12 tenses, it's hectic, but you need to learn a little more about tense and try to have a hold or control on the usage of tense. And then you have the usage of case or gender. No, uh, case is a linguistic term uh, that is used to talk about the nouns and pronouns that are associated with gender. Well, so this, I have to say something because when I went to attend an interview, uh, not an interview, a meeting as uh, I was the resource person, I was called and I was introduced on stage. They said great things about me, but one thing really bothered me. They introduced me as uh, Mrs. Pinky Shama, a renowned person, this, that. And then in the next sentence, they said, he is coming from. I did not know when I changed my gender, but that really bothered me a lot. So please be careful with the usage of gender, right? If you're talking about a woman, use she, not he, right? Fine. So put words together in correct word order. This we discussed yesterday uh, when I told you about uh, a sentence, I will call you tomorrow. If I rearrange the words in the sentence, it's not going to make any sense. So ensure that you have the correct order of words in the sentence because that is going to add value and that is going to help you in conveying the message in the most appropriate manner. So use appropriate vocabulary. Talking about vocabulary, you have two kinds of vocabulary. One is the active vocabulary and the other is the passive vocabulary. So what is the active vocab uh, vocabulary? It uh, has the words that we use regularly, that is frequently used words. You don't have a problem in understanding the meaning or using it with ease. Right, so that comes under active vocabulary. So what am I talking about in passive vocabulary? Certain words, when you come across certain words, 
you something uh, in you tells you that you know this word but you don't know the exact meaning or how to use it in a context so these words are there in your passive vocabulary because you've not been using it regularly so once you try and use them in your everyday speech uh, try a new word and keep using it regularly for uh, one or two times consecutively, then you would definitely master that and that will move to your active vocabulary. So ensure that your active vocabulary is continuously increasing and only then you will be able to perform well, speak well, right? So use language according to situation and relationship to the receiver. Like I told you, you cannot speak in the same manner with your um, a manager like you would with your mother. You can always command and order your mother. You take parents for granted always, isn't it? I shouldn't say you. We take parents for granted always. And now we, we think that we can use any tone with them, but that's incorrect. It's inappropriate. We should consider the age, the position of a person and speak respectfully where necessary, right? Next, please. Well, um, this is a continuation of the tips. Make the main ideas stand out from the supporting ideas. You can either uh, state the main idea and then use all your substantiating ideas to support that main idea, or you can give all the supporting ideas and narrow it down to your main idea. You can use either technique, but uh, the ultimate outcome should be prioritizing your ideas in an appropriate manner so that it is easy to understand. And the next point is to be confident, right? I know it is difficult when it comes to speaking. It is petrifying. It is um, terrifying for most people. And it, it takes a toll on your mental stability at times when you have to speak, especially when you're addressing a big gathering and addressing a, a gathering which has wise people like in this forum. Yes, it is really intimidating, but your confidence should always be there. You know, when you lose confidence, then everything shatters. So it is important to be confident. You may be, your, your hands may be shaking, your thighs may be shivering, but still, if you're able to hold that, control that and show to your audience or show to your listener that you are confident, then, you have been successful. Now, I can't tell you how, um, how I feel at the moment because I still have butterflies and I would admit it. And any person who's overconfident cannot perform well either, right? You should not be overconfident or have a low self-esteem about yourself. Well, um, work on your intonation. Intonation is the tone that you use in, uh, when you speak. It can be of varying pitches, where you have the rising tone, the falling tone, and then the combination of uh, fall and rise tones. So it's up to you how you use it, right? And it's important in spoken language. In written language, it does not matter because sometimes the tone or the temperament is described within brackets like you find in plays, you know, um, you know, she said that and within brackets with a smile, then, it, then you know that she is, happy about something because she's smiling. So you have certain cues to understand when you read something in print or uh, the, the written form. But when you speak, it's difficult to understand the tone. Well, I'll give you an example. Look at the screen, you have, are you working? It's a simple question. Now I can use two different tones with this. Are you working? It's more like asking a question, like what work are you doing? Are you really working? So, but if I say, are you working? So I'm shifting the tone and it sounds very sarcastic. A simple, how are you? Is more pleasant. If I say, how are you? Then it sounds rude, okay? So the tone really matters when you speak. Another example, will you please close the door? Sounds like a request, but, if I say, will you please close the door? Then it shows that I'm having a bad temper. 
right? So it is important to use the right tone. Some people get confused. Some people sound rude, though they don't intend to be rude because of this intonation problems, right? So work on your intonation and you're going to be great in speaking. So try to experiment with new words. We often come across new words. We are enthusiastic sometimes. We, we look, at, uh, look up uh, the dictionary for the meaning of it. And then we try to look up uh, for the usage and um, usage in a sentence. But sometimes we just ignore certain words, you know, but you should not do that. When you come across a new word, take the effort to find the meaning of it, take the effort to see how it is used in a sentence and try to use it in your speech. Only when you use it in your speech, it's going to get into your active vocabulary and it will remain there forever. Well, respond to what people say, avoid one word answers. When we prepare our students for speaking examinations, we always give them this valuable advice. You have to respond to people um, in the right way. When someone asks you, are you okay with it? Don't just say, okay, all right? Say, yes, I'm okay with it. Sounds much better. And it gives, only when you say a lot, people can evaluate your speaking in a speaking examination. So this advice we give them. So it is also uh, useful in speaking skills because one word answers are usually considered rude. It also says that you don't have enough to say or you don't want to respond to something. So there are various interpretations for it. So to avoid such misinterpretations, it's always better to use one sentence as an answer. One simple sentence will do. So avoid one word answers. So the next thing will be try not to translate literally from your mother tongue. I'm saying this because the grammar of one language is different from the grammar of the other. Well, why, why is it different? How different is it? How can it be different? Grammar is grammar, yes, but the grammar of one language is definitely different from the other. Let's take the example I've given you. I will come tomorrow. In Hindi, if I have to trans, I mean, if I have to translate this, it will be mekal aungi. Right in Tamil, it will be nan nale varven. For those of you who know Tamil, right? So my kal awengi or nan nale varven, it suggests that it's completely different because see, yes, the pronoun, personal pronoun, I is the same. Me, nan, I, it's all the same. But what about the adverb tomorrow? Tomorrow is at the end in English. But where do we use to uh, uh, tomorrow the adverb in Hindi or in Tamil? We're using after the pronoun. Me kal aungi. Me aungi kal is also there, but it's not in the formal diction, isn't it? So it is important to know that the grammar of one language is not the same as the other. So try and avoid literal translations. Okay, literally tr trying to literally translate every word in a sentence. Please do not do that because you will sound really ridiculous. You can try that if you want to. Trust me, you can try that with other examples when, when you have free time. You can even play it as a game, right? You give them a sentence in English and you ask them to give the uh, literal translation of every word in the same order. It sounds really fun. Next slide, please. Well, use fillers sparingly. When I went through my video yesterday, I was a little disappointed because I kept using, I kept making sounds like, uh, uh, well, I think it's my mannerism, but I was quite unhappy about it and I'm trying to reduce it. And hopefully I have done in this video, I have not avoided it completely, but I'm trying to have a control of that thing. So using fillers, use fill, uh, fillers sparingly. What are fillers? When you're at a loss for words, you use fillers. It's like, actually, you know, basically these are fillers, but then you can use it when you are completely blank, when you forget the appropriate word. It's better than being silent, better, better than pausing, coming to a hold and giving them blank stares when you're talking. It's better to use uh, fillers, but not frequently. Try to avoid it. And then the next thing would be, do not speak too fast or too slow. 
keep a steady pace when you talk. By steady pace, I'm saying um, a normal, neutral way people can understand you easily. We are not having a tongue twister uh, show or uh, anything here. Well, when you're talking to people, you're not trying to prove your prowess in the language, right? So it is better to be steady, use a, a steady pace, uh, so that if you're too fast, people are not going to understand it all. They're going to consider it as gibberish. And if you're too slow, you're sure to put your audience to sleep, right? <clears throat> so uh, by tongue twisters, I mean something like very butter, bitter, butter, and how much wood would a chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck wood, and these things. You know, if I'm going at that pace, just imagine, can you grasp anything at all? I'm, I'm sure not. So have a steady pace, only then people will try and understand what you're saying. Your speaking will be effective, okay? Right, so relax and do not hesitate to talk. I know it's intimidating when it comes to speaking, whether it is a group discussion or um, delivering a topic or exp uh, extemporizing on a topic, but relax. Okay, but do not hesitate to talk. Let it not stop you from even making the attempt, right? So because once you start, you have a flow. And I have experienced it all the time. And when you want to relax, take deep breaths. It really helps, okay? Take deep breaths and close your eyes. Imagine that you're in a very serene place, maybe um, on a meadow where by the riverside, something that can calm your mind down. It is important because if your mind is agitated, you will definitely not be able to speak well. So practice where you can and when you can. Don't procrastinate things. Don't say, okay, tomorrow I will start reading. Tomorrow I will start listening uh, to English music and improve my speaking skills. Tomorrow I'll start speaking uh, to my colleagues in English. No, it's not happening. Tomorrow never comes, right? So practice where you can and when you can without procrastinating it. Next, please. Right. Okay, so I have reached the conclusion, and I think I'm on time. So uh, this uh, quote by Horace, Roman lyric poet, is it, it talks volumes, isn't it? Once a word has been allowed to escape, it cannot be recalled. When, when you say something, you cannot get it back. You know, sometimes words can hurt people. Sometimes it can create controversy. So it is always better to be careful before you start saying something. Because once you say it, the damage done cannot be recovered, right? So speech needs to be well-planned. You need to be prepared. You need to have sound knowledge, in-depth knowledge, do research, you know, research the topic over and over again. See what others have to say about it. Um, or, or you can even quote others if you want to, to you know, substantiate your ideas, but your speech needs to be planned. But you don't have to sound as if you're, you have memorized something and you're vomiting it out literally because you just want to get it out of your system. Because I've seen many speeches like that in school, you know, where students are trained, um, and, but that's not natural. Let's speak the way we speak. Okay, but without inhibitions. Let's give it a shot. That's what we're looking at today. So consistent exposure to language. I'm sorry, I'm not done with that thing. Yeah, consistent exposure to language can improve speaking skills. So consistent exposure, by consistent exposure, I'm saying you have to be exposed to the language that is English. But what do we do? We watch dubbed movies, dubbed movies in our own language, Tamil dubbed movies, Hindi dubbed movies, please don't do that. Okay, it's not going to help you at all. And it sounds really funny. You know, you, I cannot imagine foreigners talking in Tamil and Hindi. So kindly avoid doing that because it's not helping you in any way. Rather, look, watch English movies, songs, news. And why haven't I included reading here? Because for speaking, when you have exposure with these uh, platforms, it helps better because your pronunciation also uh, improves uh, simultaneously, right? So, and uh, if I am here today, I have to thank my parents because my parents 
encouraged me to sp uh, speak in English at a very early age because they were well read and I was fortunate enough to have such parents. So I should thank them. I should thank my teachers for being my inspiration and also my employers for believing in me and giving me the platform to prove my oral skills, you know, through lectures. So I have a lot of people to thank for, for what I am today. And I take this opportunity. And uh, so the last thing that I have to say today is start speaking today. Like I told you, do not procrastinate. Tomorrow never comes. Start speaking today. Stop fearing criticism. Of course, you will face criticism. When you start speaking in English, all of a sudden, people are going to make fun of you. I have faced criticisms. People say, um, you know, uh, uh, maybe I think, uh, uh, I think of myself as a native speaker. You know, um, you know, in Hindi, if you understand Hindi. Uh, Peter in, in Tamil, okay, if you understand that. I have ignored all such uh, criticisms, okay? If I had bothered about it, I wouldn't be standing here today and addressing you. So please remember, forget about criticisms because they are not going to stand, in, uh, stand with you when you are in trouble. So you need to hone your skills. If you have the passion for the language, if you want to speak well, it's never too late. You can learn at any age, at any time, but it requires some effort. So all the best. And um, I hope this session was useful for you. I hope I spoke well this time. So thank you and have a wonderful evening. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yeah, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, there, there cannot be any second doubt. In fact, we found the first session also equally good, but they say thank that the, the, the difference between an ordinary and the extraordinary person is that extra effort, that extra effort to improve. This is by uh, Vincent Joseph. Please give tips for effective listening skills as well. Listening skills, yes, I can do that, but uh, I need an entire session for it because listening again is a vast topic. But for listening skills, I would suggest that you get ex exposed to the language. You know, you first listen to something that you like. You might like some English songs. You might be only following the beat, but try to follow the lyrics of it. You uh, watch news in English because the language in uh, uh, news channels are really good. Sometimes you find new terminologies, you can use it. So get exposed to the language. And for listening, like I told you, listen to everything in English. If you want to think in a particular language and speak in a particular language, you have to listen to everything in that language, in that target language. Some people say that once you have to uh, learn the art of communication, you should also look before the mirror and speak. What is your take on that? Yes, that's what I, I told you, sir. I do it all the time. You know, I, it helps me because when I do that, I know how my expressions are, how I'm standing, the way I'm moving my hands, my body language, my gestures. I know where to have a control. And um, it really helps me a lot. And it, it takes away this consciousness in me. So it really helps. And I would suggest that everyone should do that. You should have a trial session with imaginary audience, like I told you in the, during the session. Uh, uh, some people also uh, say that there's a, uh, not some people, but in fact it is that a webinar and a seminar is a dist uh, distinct. So once you are a speak, what difference does it make for the uh, nature of preparation while you're preparing for a webinar and work for a seminar? The nature of preparation is the same because the effort you put in. Uh, the, the expression, the expression, because you can't move the hands such as such in a uh, webinar. Yes, yes, but the nature of preparation is the same. Of course, I use my hands when I prepare for it. I stand in front of the mirror, uh, thinking of that. But yes, you have some restrictions when it is on a webinar because you don't get to make eye contact with your audience. So it is difficult to know whether your uh, audience is active, if they're really listening or sleeping. You don't have anything uh, to judge your audience, you know, to test the pulse. But yes, you have certain limitations with that. But um, I feel that the preparation process is the same. You know, the effort that we put in while preparing the PPTs or having a trial session, it's all the same. Uh, no, after doing Today is our 199th webinar. 
uh, I can gauge the fact that if the audience, if the participation is increasing on the platform, it means that people are enjoying. If they leave it, it's different. So in your case, the audience in both the sessions were increased gradually. Uh, it never thank reduced. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Uh, this, this is by... This is by Sachin Sundar. He says, I can understand English, but cannot speak. What is the way to move forward? Yes. Take the first foot forward and make an attempt. Yes, people do understand, but unless you speak, how will you know whether you can or not? You, you may think that it, it's going to be funny if I start speaking in English, all of a sudden people will think that I'm cranky or I've uh, you know got some brain damage or something. But no, I, like I told you, ignore such criticisms, make an effort, talk to your people at home, you know, or talk to your friends in English, use simple words, simple sentences in the beginning, and then try to develop slowly. So since the questions are not coming, I will ask the last question. How can one, uh, I've seen large number of people while writing the sentences, the framing of sentences, or let's assume in the oral communication, or also the framing of the sentence formation is not correct. So what is your tip for that? How to improve that writing particular skill or the communication skill? Yeah, sentence structures are important. So you need to have some knowledge about sentence structures. Like we discussed, we have simple sentences, compound sentences, and complex sentences, compound complex, only when you start reading different uh, texts, you know, like uh, instead of reading only law books, if you can look into novels when you have the leisure time, then you will come across different sentence structures. Or if you don't like novels, read a play. Or if you don't like plays, read a poem. You, have, you can see several structures, several uh, forms of sentence constructions. You can even listen to people when they speak. And one person's speech will not be exactly as this, uh, exactly the same as the other, right? So there are different ways in which you can work on your, um, work on the structuring of your sentences. It's not difficult. It just needs some time and effort and some reading, I would suggest. What is the best way to boost confidence while speaking? Well, believe that you are a wise person and everybody who is going to listen to you are fools. Trust me, I didn't do that now today because I believe that everybody um, is a professional and uh, many of them are um, uh, from very high positions. So I didn't um, mean it that way, but it really helps. It is said in speaking skills that when you speak, when you have a problem, just tell yourself that you're better than the others. You know something that the others do not know. You can deliver something the, uh, in a unique way that others cannot follow, all right? So if you believe in your abilities, then you can definitely perform. And that is why I said, think of yourself as the wisest person there in the room and think of all the others as fools. You can definitely perform well, but just think, okay? This is just to help you out, but it doesn't mean that they are fools. So the session has been well received. Like yesterday, I told you that it's going great guns on the Facebook as well as on the YouTube. Today's session is also being well received. I can see on this uh, platform plus on the Facebook and YouTube. So thank you, ma'am. And tomorrow, being the 200th webinar, we thought, why not call up someone very, very special? And he's Shekhar Nafade, the senior advocate who is well-known pan India. And the topic, keeping in view the present scenario, as we are all seeing as to how the media is discussing about, interplay of investigating agencies of CBI, ED, NCB, NIA, and police, with reference to the constitution. So do stay connected with us tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, everyone stay safe, stay blessed. And on behalf of all the participants on the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and on this platform, I thank you, ma'am, for sparing the time. And I, as I said yesterday and today also, it's quite late night in Australia. But yes. thank you for sparing the time, for giving the insights. Thank and you so much for providing this platform, sir. Thank you. It's as long as one is learning, they say, uh, one is always learning. And as you rightly said, 
that one has to try it because in the law it is said that it's better to try and fail rather than failing to try. So everyone exactly. stay safe, stay blessed. 